Panorama TV presents How They Do That, where we explore the world of professional photographers and share their techniques with you. Here's your host, Mark Wallace. Hi everybody, welcome to another episode of How They Do That. I'm Mark Wallace. Well today on the show we have Jeremy Cowart. Jeremy is a professional photographer and he describes himself as an entertainment photographer. He's got a lot more going on than just that. So thanks for joining us today, Jeremy. Absolutely, thank you guys. Really appreciate you having me on. Well you bet. Well you do a lot more, a uh, lot of different types of photography than just entertainment photography. So could you walk us through the types of photos that you might take, uh, let's say maybe in a year's period of time? Yeah, I mean, essentially I'm a portrait photographer, um, but the portraits that I do range from entertainment, which is, you know, TV shows to some fashion photography, a lot of musicians, and then I shoot portraits of, you know, people in Africa and Haiti, and I, I travel all over the world, and so, um, so yeah, portrait, portraits range all over the place. Well, that's awesome. Well, we really have a lot to talk about today, and I really want to break it down into a couple sections. Uh, first, let's talk about some of the nuts and bolts of how you shoot your portraits, uh, but you also do a lot of things to help other people. You are the founder of Help Portrait, and you also are involved in some efforts to stop the spread of AIDS in Africa, as well as some other things to help developing nations. I'm really curious to ask you about that. And then you also have a new DVD I want to ask you about. It's called Life Finder. I'm really curious to hear about that. But before we get to that, let's get back to the nuts and bolts. So can you talk to us about uh, some of these images that you shot, some of the portraits that you shot on location? Can you walk us through how you set up your lighting and scout locations, and how do you do this location shooting? Yeah, I mean, typically, as far as locations go, I just look for um, locations that will allow me a lot of variety, a lot of locations, you know, that I can do var various things and tricks with that offer just different variety. I guess it depends on what I'm going for. And a lot of times I, I simply don't know what I'm going for. And so that's why I pick a location with variety that I can just go there and improvise and come up with stuff on the spot. Well, one of the shots that you've taken that I really love, it's a portrait of a couple kissing in Haiti. I believe, in fact, it was for uh, the voices of Haiti, and it just looks like perfect light. Can you walk us through that? Was it natural light? Did you use strobes? Tell us a little bit about that portrait. Yeah, it was, uh, I mean, that, there's, a, there's a big story around that photo. We were in Haiti, and I was doing my Voices of Haiti project, using, uh, asking people what they thought on the current situation. This was just days after the earthquake. So there were still aftershocks and, and all of that stuff. And so we heard that there was a wedding going on. So we drove around until we found this wedding and the couple was leaving um, their wedding. And I said, what do, you, what do you guys have to say about all this? And keep in mind, they had just lost their home. They had just lost the church they were getting married in. And so the only piece of, you know, quote unquote rubble that was sitting there was a paper plate. And so they grabbed the paper plate and wrote, love conquers all which is a, obviously an extremely powerful message given the circumstances. And so all I had in terms of lighting was a very small, um, you know, probably 16 inch softbox with a pro photo, a 600 watt uh, light on it. Um, and it's just a real simple, you know, one light. Um, uh, it was almost nighttime, so there's just a little bit of sunlight left. And uh, there's a powerful photo with their, their crumbled church um, resting behind them in that photo. Well, that's just one in a series of photos uh, for Voices of Haiti, and we're going to talk about Voices of Haiti in a little bit, but let's get back to how you travel on location. Can you talk to us a little bit about the gear that you would put in your bag for a normal overseas trip? Yeah, I mean, on normal overseas stuff, I take uh, my Canon 5D Mark II, I take uh, about a handful of lenses, my 16 to 35 millimeter wide angle, my 24 to 70 2.8, um, and my uh, 70 to 200 2.8. Um, I usually take a, a 50 millimeter 1.2. Um, sometimes I take out my 100 millimeter macro. Um, I also have a 15 miller, millimeter fisheye. Um, and that, that's pretty much my, my personal range. So do you find that you have to pack a little bit differently for uh, shooting overseas than doing domestic work? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, overseas I have to be very stealth and very light. So I only have so much stuff I can take, which is why I usually only travel with one light. Well, let's talk a little bit about some of the other types of photography that you do. And I'm talking specifically about your compositing work that I just find uh, fascinating. Well, you sent us this image, it's sort of this crazy carnival mummy image. Can you talk to us a little bit about the steps that you had to, to uh, go through to create this image? Yeah, I mean, the image, you know, a lot of my compositing work is very realistic and everything looks like it's supposed to be, 
intact in the same image. This, this mummy shot is obviously chaotic. I mean, it's all over the place, and it was meant to be. They, they specifically wanted this image that didn't really make sense. You know, you've got, the, you've got the tent at the bottom with the little figurines. You've got the guy above it. You've got the clouds, the oversized moon, the fireworks. I mean, this image is a bit over the top, and so it breaks a lot of rules of compositing, but it was still a fun image to work on. Um, the actual mummy's word that you see in there was actually a 20-foot sign that we photographed in my studio um, that took a, you know, several hours to just shoot that one sign of the mummy's word. It was a massive thing that they built by hand. And so it was a pretty, it was an all-day shoot just to get that one image because we shot everything separately from the sparklers to the little, you know, figurines to the tent to the, uh, you know, the sky. Everything was uh, shot separately. Well, that is a lot of work. So was that storyboarded before you went into production? Roughly. I mean, they sent me some sketches. They sent me all the elements they wanted in the shot. And so, yeah, it was a very rough storyboard. But, um, but yeah, they just wanted this. I mean, they're a very crazy band live. And so they wanted that to be represented on their album cover. Just absolute, total chaos. And so, uh, so I think pretty sure we achieved, achieved the chaos. <laughs> well, I would definitely say that you achieved the chaos. Well, you have a background as a graphic designer. So when you're approaching some of these projects like this, do you think that your uh, background as a graphic designer comes into play for finding these environments, creating some of the textures and uh, the, really the compositions in these types of images? Absolutely. I mean, I feel like anytime I'm looking to the viewfinder, I am using my graphic design background because graphic design, we study color, balance, symmetry, um, you know, composition is a big thing. So anytime I pick up the camera, you know, composition is the first thing I look for, which to me is design. So I'm always designing with my camera. So I feel like having that background played a huge role in the way I, the way I see things. Well, that's really interesting. In fact, you know, we talked to David Bean a few months ago. He also has a graphic design background and he sort of gave us the same input about how his background helps him design with his camera. Well, let's shift gears just a little bit. There's a lot of work that you're doing that's just really altruistic. You're helping people all over the world. In fact, you're involved in so many things. I'm not sure we have time to go through all of them, but there's one thing that I really want to talk about. It's something that you're really well known for. It's called Help Portrait. So can you walk us through what Help Portrait is and how that's helping people? Yeah, essentially it's a movement of photographers using all their gear and time and expertise to give back to people in need. Um, once a year we do a global photo shoot for, uh, for the needy and that can be the homeless, that can be people at abuse shelters, that could be you know, uh, former army vets, that can be um, um, you know, kids at a children's hospital, it can really be anybody who could use that uplifting during the holidays. And so we've only done it for two years now and uh, I think we're up to about 100,000 portraits over the two years. And so um, we've got photographers all over the world, literally spread across about 50 countries participating at this point. So uh, yeah, it's just, it's just beautiful to see what, what pictures mean to people who have never had that opportunity before. I mean, it's literally a way to show them that they're valued, that they're special, that they have, you know, they have dignity, and it kind of is a, is a, a little bit of a life changer for the people we photograph because for the first time they're being shown how beautiful they are with makeup and and uh, the whole deal, and so it's really a perspective changing um, event for a lot of people. So, if there are photographers that uh, want to become involved, where do they go? Where do they sign up to become uh, involved in the Help Portrait movement? Yeah, we're at uh, help-portrait.com or on Facebook at. Um, Facebook.com slash Help Portrait. We're on Twitter, of course. And so we also have a community site at help-portrait.com that they can get involved in and find their city. So uh, we're all over the internet, wherever they want to find us. Well, that's amazing. Well, there's some other things that you're doing that I really want to talk to you about, and that's some of the work that you're doing in Africa. So can you tell us a little bit about uh, Hope International Blood Water Mission and ONE? Can you tell us what those are? Yeah, I mean, they're all different organizations working in Africa. Hope International, they do microfinancing, um, so they're essentially giving s small, very small microloans to people in third world countries so that they can launch their businesses. It's a really powerful, I think, world-changing idea. And so I work with them a lot. Um, Bloodwater Mission, uh, African Leadership, Mocha Club, they're all working to, to provide clean water in Africa and to train pastors to do all kinds of different things. So I've worked with them, um, I've worked with one quite a bit, and so, uh, so yeah, I just, you know, 
once you go to Africa, your, your heart kind of stays there. And so I, I think I'll always have a, uh, a, a, you know, a piece of me as will always be in Africa. So I'm excited to, to go back there soon and continue my work there. Well, that's amazing. Well, we wish you the best of luck. Well, you also have a coffee table book. It's called Awakening, and I really find this interesting because uh, you traveled with Louis Giglio and the Passion uh, Conferences. And Louis is an old friend of mine. We traveled together for years and years, so I really want to see this book. I don't have it yet. It's on order, so I can't wait to see when it arrives. But can you tell us a little bit about what Awakening is, um, what it is, and how it took place? Yeah, uh, Louis Giglio, the founder of Passion, called me and said, hey, we're going to do a world tour this year. We're going to go to 17 countries and we're going to hire you, bring you out and you're going to shoot a coffee table book for us and uh, it's a pretty cool assignment. Um, so my job was to go out and to just basically document everything. I had to document the shows, I had to shoot portraits, I had to document the cities we were in. So for the first time I kind of felt like I was a concert photographer, I was a portrait photographer, I was a nature photographer. I mean I literally shot 24-7 for three months. In, across 17 countries. So it was one of my favorite things I've ever done. And uh, I'm really proud of that body of work. A lot of times I'm pretty hard on myself, but I think you know, that body of work is something that I really enjoyed and poured my heart into. So uh, I'd love for people to, to, to see that book. Yeah, it, it looks amazing. Well, I have to ask, I mean, why is it that you're working so hard to help so many people? I mean, with your success, you could sort of, you know, roll up your sleeves and say, you know, shooting these celebrities and doing the things that you do, um, I'm just going to be Jeremy Cowart and I'm going to be really successful and be done with it. But instead, what's happened is you sort of become this guy that helps many, many other people. So uh, why are you doing that? Um, to me, they go hand in hand in a very weird way. I mean, I don't, I don't want to do your traditional role of a famous photographer. I'm not pursuing fame or fortune. I mean, to me, it's kind of pointless and a dead end road. And so it's like, if I'm going to achieve the success commercially, I want to use that platform to point to things that are bigger than me, which to, you know, are Africa and Haiti and, and use that platform to give back because otherwise the platform is pointless. And so, um, yeah, I, th I think as long as I can continue to grow and uh, pursue excellence as a photographer, I can use that excellence to point, bring excellence to things that need attention, um, like all these things we've been discussing. So, in a way, to me, they kind of work hand in hand. Yeah, well, that's, that's amazing. You know, I have to admit, I get a little frustrated with a lot of the photographers I see all over the United States that are just interested in getting more Twitter followers or more well-known on uh, the social media networks. So it's really nice to see a photographer that's using their talents to help other people. It's, it's just really refreshing. So thank you for that. Well, let's talk a little bit about the DVD that you just released. It's called Life Finder. And uh, by looking at some of the, the things I saw on your website, I sort of get the feeling that uh, the DVD allows us to sort of follow along with you and watch and learn from you as you work as a photographer and helps us to sort of connect the dots of watching you work as a photographer as well as somebody that is helping other people as well. So can you tell us a little bit about Life Finder and what we can find on that DVD? Yeah, it's essentially, uh, my friend called it an encyclopedia of, of yours truly, and, and, and that's kind of the goal, is to just kind of throw everything out there. I get emails all the time from photographers saying, hey, I'd love to see you work, and for different logistic, logistical reasons, it's hard to pull that off, and so we wanted to put together a DVD that just had everything on it. It's got, my, it's got a documentary from Haiti on there, it's got an interview with Zach Arias, it's got seven different photo shoots, one with Imogen Heap in London, um, several different bands. It's just, it's just kind of everything that I'm into. It's like a, there's a vision toolkit on there. There's a, me talking about my, my cloud libraries, but how I find locations. Um, there's all kinds of technical talk about gear, um, information about help portrait in Haiti. So it covers a wide variety of, of stuff. And so that's awesome. It's, it's sort of like the person that says, hey, Jeremy, I'd like to come and hang out for a day or a week and see how you work. So now they can do that virtually with Life Finder DVD. Is that right? Yeah, that's exactly right. Well, we're out of time, Jeremy. So thank you very much for joining us today. But before we go, uh, can you tell us where uh, people can find the Life Finder DVD? Because I want to make sure people know where to get that. Yeah, yeah. It's at uh, lifefinderdvd.com. Um, and you can buy it there and watch the trailer for the video to find out a lot more information. So. Well, again, Jeremy, thank you so much for joining us today. Yep, thank you. I really appreciate it.
Well, you bet. Well, remember, if you want to see more of Jeremy's work, you can go to jeremycowart.com or just go to the Adorama Learning Center. We've posted all the links to the uh, stuff we've talked about in the interview today, all the stuff for Help Portrait. You can go and sign up there or look at Awakening or the other organizations that we talked about in today's episode. Well, remember, if you have somebody that you'd like to see on how they do that, please send your suggestions to me at askmark at adorama.com. Well, thanks for joining me this week. I'll see you again next week. This episode is brought to you by Adorama TV. Visit the Adorama Learning Center where you'll find photography tips and techniques, links to the gear used in this episode, and related videos. For all the latest photography, video, and computer gear, visit Adorama.com. And the next time you're in New York City, visit our store located on 18th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue.